Welcome again. Right now we're at John chapter 15, verses 1 through 17. The parable of the vine and the branches. Jesus is speaking here. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the farmer. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Now, some people believe that once you're saved, you're always saved, okay? That once you, you know, say the sinner's prayer, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know, you will never, ever so-called lose your salvation. Here, it's very clear. Jesus said, if you don't bear fruit, the Father will take that branch away. Jesus said that he's the vine and that his disciples, his followers, are the branches. So here Jesus makes it clear that it is possible for you to be taken off of the vine. Continuing, every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now this here is not so pleasant, okay? The the process of pruning. You know, it says also in the scriptures that Discipline is not pleasant at the time, but in the long run, it produces a harvest or a, a, the fruit of righteousness and peace. So if you are being disciplined of the Lord, that's a good sign that you are a child of God or that at least God cares for you, okay? Because if he doesn't care for you, he wouldn't discipline you. He wouldn't punish you to teach you things, okay? The fact that God would punish you is a sign that he actually cares for you. Verse 3, you are already pruned clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I in you, as the branch can't bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. Now, if it's impossible to lose your salvation or to be taken off the vine, then why would Jesus instruct his followers to remain in him? If it was impossible to fall away from him, if it was impossible to be removed from him, to be separated from him, to be cut off the vine, Why would Jesus warn those who are listening to him to remain in him? You know, he said, basically, if you don't bear fruit, God will take you away. He will cut you off of the vine. It doesn't sound like salvation to me. And he says, if you don't remain in me, you won't bear fruit. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If a man doesn't remain in me, notice it says, if, there are a lot of conditions here in this parable, if a man doesn't remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and is withered. That doesn't sound like salvation to me. That sounds like death, spiritual death. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. This here is speaking about hell. Okay. I don't know how any people who are the once saved, always saved crowd, the OSAS crowd, can can read this and continue in that very erroneous doctrine. How can you? I mean, it's very clear here. You are a branch and you better be careful or else God will come and cut you away. God will take you off of the vine and you will be thrown away and you will be burned. (laughs) That doesn't sound very good to me. Verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it will be done for you. Again, if here, if you remain in me. Verse 8. In this, my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. That's what God wants. And so you will be my disciples. 
So the implication here is that if you do not bear much fruit, you are not Jesus' disciples. How many people go to church today that bear much fruit for God? Just a question. Verse 9, even as my Father has loved me, I have loved you. Remain in my love. Notice this, Jesus commanded his disciples to remain in his love. Again, by implica- it's obvious here that it's possible to not remain in his love. If it was impossible to not remain in his love. In other words, if it's impossible to come out of the love of Jesus, then why would Jesus command his disciples to remain in his love? If, again, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, even as I kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. Here again is another condition. If you keep my commandments, well, what are his commandments? Again, you got to realize that Yeshua, Jesus, is the personification of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, so to speak, okay? So the commandments of the Tanakh, the commandments of the Word of God, are the commandments of Yeshua. Jesus is the Word in the flesh. Jesus is the human form of the Word of God. When John sat down in in chapter 1 and wrote about how the Word became human form, the Word of God came to us in a human form, what Word was he talking about? There's only one Word that existed back in those days. Those were the Scriptures before Jesus was born. The Scriptures as per Tanakh. The Scriptures as per Dead Sea Scrolls. Those were the scriptures that John was talking about that was personified in Jesus. So the commandments of Jesus are the commandments of the so-called Old Testament. The commandments of Jesus are the commandments of the Tanakh. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Obviously, if you don't keep his commandments, you will not remain in Jesus' love. So his love is conditional. I know a lot of people don't like that, but this is what the Bible says. This is what it says here. Do you want the truth? Or do you want ear-tickling messages from modern-day preachers? You choose. And notice in the last half of verse 10 that Jesus made it clear that that is the way it is between him and his father. He receives his father's love because he keeps his father's commandments. If he didn't keep his father's commandments, obviously he wouldn't be in his father's love, okay? His father wouldn't love him if he was a sinner that didn't keep the commandments and the instructions of his father. That's what Jesus is saying here. That is what it's saying, okay? Let's let's put aside modern-day corrupt sugar Christianity, and let's take a hold of the real, true salt Christianity. What it says. We want the truth, don't we? Verse 11, Jesus continued by saying, I have spoken these things to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be made full. This is my commandment that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay his life down for his friends. You are my friends if, notice there's a great big if there, another condition, conditional friendship. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant doesn't know what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for everything that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. That reminds me of a scripture that says that God reveals what he's about to do to his prophets. Verse 16, you didn't choose me, 
Ah, so it wasn't your choice to go forward in church and to go to the altar and say the sinner's prayer, yada, yada, yada. It wasn't your choice. You didn't choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you will ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Notice there are so many conditions here that Jesus made it very clear to us. We have to obey his commands. We have to remain in him. We have to remain in his love. We have to remain in the vine. I mean, this just blows away the OSAS, the once saved, always saved doctrine. Again, Anybody that believes in the once saved, always saved doctrine must put their blinders on when they read this. They must ignore what Jesus clearly says. May God give you the spirit and the revelation to see and to understand what he has to say here. Not to ignore anything. Not to ignore this verse, that verse, this precept, that precept. But let's take it all in. We want the truth, don't we? And we want the whole truth. May God bless you in your pursuit of him. And may he show you great and mighty things as you call upon him. Thanks again.